Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today we're at St. Paul Catholic Center on the campus of the University of Wisconsin in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, with me is Dr. John Chapel Stowe. Your friends call you Chappie. Yep. That's, uh, so thank you for showing us off th this organ today. Tell me a little bit about this instrument in the building we're in. Okay. Well, this building uh, was uh, replaced an older brutalist building from the 1960s um, that was raised, and uh, just before it was raised, I got a call from from Father Eric here at St. Paul Catholic Center um, about the, their plans for a new building, which was news to me. He hoped that there would be a world-class organ in the new chapel, and uh, that he want, wanted the university to use the organ. Um, and I said, uh, I'd be happy to help, I'll be right over. So uh, Father Eric and I worked together, uh, along with Glenn Schuster, who was the um, organist for the diocesan choir in Madison. And um, we worked on plans for an organ, looked at a number of organ builders, and uh, Taylor and Booty organ builders came up as uh, the most logical choice uh, for this situation. Uh, the organ builder was selected before the building existed. Uh, so it was a, a challenge for everybody to, um, uh, to start plans for an organ when the space was not, was not constructed yet. Um, so we stayed in touch with, with, we made sure people stayed in touch with one another. Um, there were a few hitches here and there, but we ultimately came up as a successful project. Uh, this is Taylor Booty's Opus 74. It was completed early in 2018. Um, uh, the total finishing was uh, done by Aaron Reichert and Chris Bono of the Taylor and Booty firm. Um, it is, so, come back to when you were still in the planning stages. Yes. What were some things that you needed to have or wanted to have to make sure that it was a world-class organ? <laughs> well, I had worked with Taylor and Booty um, before. Uh, on another organ in Madison, actually, at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. This was a very different situation. Um, the organ, it was foreseen that the organ would play a number of roles as a teaching organ and um, perhaps as an accompanying instrument for choirs, um, uh, possibly the diocesan, the diocesan choir, but other choirs that might be uh, visiting Madison. Um, we knew that the space was not going to be terribly large, uh, but we did everything we could to make sure that the uh, acoustics were were decent and would support um, an organ. So the organ's a little larger than one might think. Yeah, how many, how many ranks do we have in here? Oh, ranks. I haven't counted ranks. Okay. We're at 39 stops, I believe. Okay, I get 56 ranks. So, I um, guess three, when I... Yeah, three, yeah maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds right. More than 50, Sorry. I think, it's <laughs> safe to say. Uh, so yeah, it's a big organ in a room that doesn't see... Uh, a ton of people. It's, right. it's a nice reverberant big space though, mm -hmm. so the, the organ's got a great space to speak into. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there's the grate, of course, and it's built on the principal eight foot. is the foundation of the of the organ and is typical of what one would expect from Taylor and Booty, although this is somewhat broader um, mm -hmm. than uh, in, perhaps in the more English or uh, more recent German tradition than the 17th century and, tradition. And that's all out in the facade? That's all right. out in the facade. Okay. Um, the C side is on our left, of course, and the C sharp side is on our right, but the grade is split into these, what visually you see as two flats. Mm -hmm. Um, with the puddle on the arms and the towers See. and the two flaps with the grate. The swell is located directly above mm -hmm. and next to the ceiling mm -hmm. and the positive is below behind these uh, doors with the carvings mm -hmm. on them, which we'll talk about. And the thing we didn't say, which is implied with the Taylor and Moody, this is mechanical action. Oh yeah, everything, So that's, everything's laid out where it makes sense uh, mechanically. So. Right. Okay. right. Well, let's keep building up the, the principal course in the okay. grate. Where do we go from so, there? Uh -huh. So adding the forefoot, uh, and that forefoot octave.
broader principle sound, but it's still very bright and has and very fills the room with that, that crowding mixture up there. How many ranks is that mixture in the end? Uh, that's four to five ranks. Okay, so just five ranks of mixture on top of all of that, but it really brightens it up. And then the uh, Warden 16 and Quint 2 and 2 thirds uh, on the great. <laughs> German tradition. It's a darker sound mm -hmm. than, than what we sometimes hear out of, out of uh, modern trumpets. There is a cornet, four rank cornet, uh, that starts at starts at G. Um, and uh, is a perfect so solo stop uh, for uh, him playing uh, to accompany from the uh, other keyboards. <laughs> trumpet to huh. if you need more brilliance from the trumpet. And that's a principal scale cornet meant to go with the principles yes. and the reeds. Well no, it's actually it's a non cornet mm -hmm. uh, in the in the Dutch okay. in Dutch tradition. I see. All right. The see. other stops on the great is a whole third um, a foot, another um, uh, so, something else from the heritage of 17th century Germany. Mm -hmm. Very lovely. Mm -hmm. With that, the Spitzflöte, which uh, another 17th century German stop that uh, sounds surprisingly modern. of a dulciana, yeah. a little principle, it's a little fatter, yeah. a, a string. Uh, let's go to the swell. Okay. And um, the swell, uh, the foundation stop in the swell is a principle eight foot. It's also pretty broad compared to. It is. Uh, it's it is. similar to the great principle in sound uh -huh. and, and character. Yeah. They do have different different flavors. Eight-foot principle um, it does a wonderful job, actually, of continuum playing, mm. um, and it, it might seem to be large up here, but when you uh, almost everything is loud in this room mm. uh, because it's a very pinny uh, <laughs> acoustic. Uh, so when you get a cornetto and a singer, as we had in here uh, while the builders were here working, uh, we we were 
so I reading some <laughs> some old Italian music, and the principal eight foot was perfect huh. uh, perfect continual right. stop for that. Um, also, the eight foot uh, in the swell, the viola da gamba. Celeste, of course, goes with it. And since I've got the Celeste on, it's time to try the swell box. <laughs> has a, a wonderful range. Uh, the swell is actually open on three sides. Oh, okay. So that's that's part of the reason. When when it's open, it's really open. <laughs> uh, the breeze goes right through when it's open. It's like an old farmhouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gedeck, eight foot on the swell. Standard Taylor and Booty stop. Okay, so uh, then there's an octave four foot. Uh, work with the, both the Kadek, a very dark um, Kadek. Though are definitely darker than the four foot, so we're getting a little bit of four foot right, uh, right. progression that's, there coming out in that right. chorus. That's right. And that those upper harmonics really help the effectiveness of the swell, mm -hmm. of course, because the upper harmonics are the first to go when you close the swell. <laughs> so that uh, you come out with a rather ni nice, uh, warm sound. Um, there's also at, at four foot, I didn't mention uh, the salisette, four foot, uh, four foot string. little insipid, uh, but the effect it has, either using with the gamba or the gedek, is, is kind of remarkable. With the gedek. functions like a small principle mm -hmm. um, because it's got that brightness yeah. Um, yeah. but not quite the stringy sound right. that you'd expect. And we see those four foot strings in 19th century German organs mm -hmm. um, and it's fun to play with the with the variables, um, um, different permutations with uh, four foot and, and eight foot, narrow scale, wide scale, it's just <laughs> one of those color games you can play. Sure. There's a nazat, uh, two and two thirds. 
this with the um, with the eight and four. in the swell, there's a, an oboe, eight foot. sound there yep. for four yep. trumpets. So a little like bit, a great, a little bit more. It's um, brighter than the great trumpet, but it's still. Zing, zing trumpet. And there's similarities. Right. Yes, absolutely similarity. And a forgot 16. with the forgot. One is the way it sits under the um, A4 and 2 in the swell um, to give an accompanying sound some gravity. There is a, a facade principle, um, which is prepared. Okay. Um, and the pipes are here. Oh, uh, they're in the front of the, in front of the swell, oh. um, but they're yet to come. This is a an idea that, uh, as the case design proceeded, um, it was clear the organ was going to have to be quite wide mm -hmm. for its size, so there wasn't enough vertical height to go vertical, and. Um, that was going to necessitate some sort of treatment in the front of the swell, mm. some creative treatment. And I, I guess Taylor Booty had done a similar thing at Grace Church in New York where they had a similar problem and needed, some, needed a facade and mm. decided to, to uh, put principal pipes. And that will be, when it, when it does get paid for, uh, mm -hmm. the idea will be vo voiced very, very gently in sort of in the Italian manner. Um, and and the organ will have three eight foot principles in the, wow. in, the in the manuals. So is that just a matter of the, the, the chests aren't there, or the, the chest, action the action just needs to be connected? Every, everything is there. Okay. Except it's just not hooked up. Just need to connect the and action to not, it. Not, the not windings. Voiced yet. All right. All right. But uh, we'll hope to hear that someday. Sir. Right. Right. Well, as soon as we have a couple, of those three prepared okay. stops to talk to them, talk about as we come to them. So the positive, um, they were positive as it's called. Mm. Um, we have a good act eight, another typical Taylor Booty stop. I think every Taylor Booty organ has something like this stop. speech <laughs> and the, the transparency of the, of the sound and the two go together.
opening up with the two foot. opening these carved uh, doors. Oh. Uh, it's fairly easy to stand on the bench and open the center door and it makes an enormous difference if you want to um, oh. make it equivalent to the swell and the grate. It's very easy to do so you can have a sort of quasi planum trio hmm. if you I wish. See. Yeah. Yeah. There are a couple of pieces in the repertoire where that's <laughs> very useful. Um, Posey also has a Sesqui Altera, two rank Sesqui Altera. And I'll just do, I think, a sort of an old-timey German thing um, with the uh, A-foot good act, four-foot principle with Sesquil Altera. <laughs> Quintadena, eight foot. Um, I'm a kind of a Quintadena junkie, so uh, when they're wonderful, I love them. It's beautifully with the four foot uh, spitz connect. Distinctive sound. sound there. I like or a it. solo yeah. with the good act and the swell. Hmm. Um, it's actually pretty amazing. Um, particularly loud but that, that quinty sound really cuts through and, right. and, and makes it clear. Very nice. And there's a Dolzian uh, 8 foot. Um, again, uh, I'll uh, go with the accompaniment of the swell. century German effect but also can be can play the role of a clarinet mm. so it's it's a it's a sort of multi-purpose uh, little weird stuff mm -hmm. and then uh, we have a, a good size pedal division here good size pedal division 16 principal a 32 foot Subas. Resultant from uh, F from low F sharp. Okay. 
was uh, down, um, but they're from G up, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's uh, the pipes are the right length. So I suppose you could say it's a um, um, 22 foot or something like that. <laughs> okay. um, the Posada, 16. So it's. Uh, solos in the pedal. You can or here it's a different color, but it mm. doesn't it's not uh, uh, excruciatingly loud. Mm -hmm. um, and the Subas and Gedak. The typical mm -hmm. Subas and Gedak that you'll use in less um, less loud minor word registrations. There is a stop knob for the for a four foot trumpet, um, which is another prepared stop. This is one that came up again in the design of the case. Um, uh, we discussed we were discussing the layout in the case, and there was space um, in the pedal towers and. What would you like? Uh, would you like to prepare something? I said, well, the four foot trumpet was actually in my original plan, <laughs> uh, but not in the budget. Mm -hmm. So, um, four foot trumpet. Some days. Similarly, mm -hmm. on the puzzle sheet, mm -hmm. again, uh, there was space because of the depth of the case, and there was space for one more rank. What would you like? And um, I'm very fond of wooden principles, um, mm -hmm. and also would have love to have been able to include one of the organs, so uh, they made a stop called Principal Dulcis, um, which the idea is that it would be possibly a wooden principle. So that would be um, yet another principle in the manuals. It would be a fourth principle in the, in the manuals, although mm -hmm. a wooden principle is not quite yeah, the same. Yeah.
We start our tour of the organ uh, here in the blower room. This is to the right of the console as your, the organist is seated. And in it we see the blower and three large wedge bellows. The blower is located in there. And the organ is on. Here we see that it has a Schnitger style beater tremolo on it. Uh, there's one tremolo for the entire organ. Everything trims when that comes on. There's a static regulator. That actually regulates some of the pedal pipes and often their offset chests. There's a swing away ladder, which is fun. <laughs> and 16 back here in the back wall. So this is the proper stack in the console, yeah. And this is the bottom of the positive. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we got in there. And that's the grate over there. Mm -hmm. That's the seaside. No. Seaside of the grate. Okay. From here we go up the ladder, up to the next level. To see into the great and swell. We stop in here. This is the great. Tubes for the Kone mm. ranges. Get out of your way or something. You see the side of the swell box. Close those doors and we go up a level, and now we're behind the swell. Of course, we're just looking at one side of it. The, the tallest pipes are in the middle. Those are reeds, which are all right in front. This is a John Brumbaugh thing oh, yeah. where you can, to tune, you have, you can pull down, I didn't put a stop on, but you can pull down the little trackers here and tune to the little, you know, which is, you don't need an assistant to tune. Of course, we can see here most of this organ is cone tuned, and the flutes, the metal gedect and the war flute, have gears. That's how you tune those pipes. So, regular tuning of the organ is really only necessary on the reeds. Just look at the swell linkages that controls uh, the three different sides of shades. And there's a lot of shade space to operate there. And here's the middle. We can see the tallest pipes. You can see that the case has actually been modified to go over the tops of those pipes. And there were some that had to be removed from the chest and put into a better location for speaking. 
And from there we go back down. You can see in here to the pedal reeds. Very easy to open panels that are held shut by magnets. So everything's very close together, but it's all fairly accessible. That's how you could get into the chest to work on the action if needed. Here's our commemorative plaque of everyone involved with building this organ. Um, the organ, uh, the temperament used for this organ is the same that was used for Taylor Booty's instrument in Grace Church, New York, and also um, the Episcopal Seminary in Virginia, in Arlington, or Alexandria. It is a uh, temperament that uh, was worked out, I think Aaron Reichert is maybe largely responsible for it, but I don't really know all the, all the folks who are involved in developing the temperament. Um, uh, it is, a, because of Grace Church being uh, at that point, uh, the uh, largest kind of eclectic instrument of, of Taylor and Booty, um, the organist uh, of the church, Patrick Allen, wanted, wanted a temperament that was mild enough that he could use it for um, repertoire in remote keys. So um, they developed this temperament, which is not exactly equal temperament. It's getting kind of close, but it is not equal is a, a well temperament, which uh, is an effort to emulate what might have been used in England in the middle of the 19th century.
Chappie, thank you so much for showing us Opus 74 of Taylor and Booty here yes. uh, in, on the campus of the University of Wisconsin. It's a fascinating instrument, uh, and you must be very proud to have been part of well, bringing it to life. It's, it's fun to be able to use this organ. Uh, and what this, is, this, this is a very busy place. Well, let's say so, besides, besides the regular services, what else goes on in here? Um, well, there are a lot of services. Mm -hmm. um, and during the school year, there are three each day. Mm -hmm. And um, there are also students who live in the building. Oh. So we have to be respectful both of the liturgical activity mm -hmm. and confessions, but also um, the residents. So we can't really go too late into the evening. <laughs> um, all those students do stay up late. I don't want to push, push, the, push it too much. Um, so we do have some, some time available, but it's, it's not, not our facility. It's, yes. it's, uh, we're colleagues in that. So. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful instrument by Taylor and Booty. Of course, Taylor and Booty is an Apoba builder, uh, the Associated Pipe Organ Builders of America, and they are one of the sponsors of the Organ Media Foundation that make it possible for us to be here today bringing this organ to you. So for more information about them, you can visit their website at apoba.com to find out more about their member builders. Thank you again, Chappie. Uh, remember, for streaming classical organ music 24 hours a day, visit our three streaming stations, organlive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. We have more organs for Madison coming up, so make sure you're subscribed to our channel. I'm Brent Johnson. I'll talk to you soon.